If you're taking the CIE A Level Maths 9709 Pure 1 exam in May June 2025, then this video is for you. I've analyzed 14 of the most recent papers to identify key trends and in this video we're going to break them down so you know exactly what to expect. And if you stick around until the end, I've got a special guest paper just for you. I'm Takuzo Ganre, I graduate high school with straight A stars and for the past two years I've been helping students like you do the same. If you're feeling anxious, overwhelmed, or unsure where to start, I've created a complete course that streamlines everything with step-by-step -step videos, interactive quizzes, and an exclusive student community to keep you on track. You can get access to it by clicking the first link in the description. Otherwise, like the video, subscribe, and let's dive right in. So we'll start off by analyzing the trends for each topic, then at the end of this video I'm going to give you some general advice to help you perform better in your Pure 1 exam. So let's start off with the quadratics topic. Over the past few years, one question has consistently dominated this topic and it's showing no signs of slowing down. That's the discriminant question. It has appeared in 12 of the last 14 papers, making it one of the most frequent questions in Pure 1. I strongly recommend spending time mastering the discriminant question before the major an exam because it's almost guaranteed to show up. Apart from the discriminant, completing the square has been gaining popularity. In fact, it appeared in all of the October-November 2024 papers, so it's definitely one to practice. As for hidden quadratics, you should give them some attention too, but we'll come back to them when we talk about trig. Moving on to functions, we're seeing a resurgence in graph transformations, but this is one of those topics where almost everything gets tested. To be fully prepared, make sure you have a solid grasp of range, composite functions, inverse functions, and your transformations. When it comes to coordinate geometry, the circles question is always a big one, and it seems like Cambridge is getting more creative with it each year. If you want to stay ahead, make sure to master your IGCSE circle geometry basics, because yes, Cambridge can and will will test you on that. And on top of that, you should know the two different ways of expressing the equation of a circle. We have the standard form and its expanded form. You should be able to move back and forth between these two forms. We've also seen a rise in popularity of the points of intersection question. It appeared in two of the three October 2024 papers. So watch out for that. Make sure you're comfortable with solving for points of intersection. And this points of intersection question typically leads into an area of the shaded region question, which falls under integration. We'll talk about that later. Now on to circular measure. This topic is both predictable and unpredictable at the same time. Predictable in the sense that you know you're going to get a question involving area or perimeter of some sort of shape. Unpredictable in the sense that if the Cambridge examiner is feeling extra creative, then you know you're going to get some weird shape. But to be honest, these weird shapes that they sometimes bring up are just a combination of your circles, your sectors, and your triangles. So if you know how to find the area of these shapes, you should be able to then find the area or perimeter of that weird shape. So just make sure you're good with that. Under trigonometry, the traditional trig identities have just kind of gone AWOL. This is largely due to the rise of both trig hidden quadratics and trig transformations. Trig hidden quadratics are just for the most part glorified hidden quadratics. Take for example, the trig hidden quadratic in paper 13, October, November 2024. Notice how we can rewrite sine to the 4 theta as sine squared theta theta squared. And if we use a substitution, hopefully you can see that this is in fact a quadratic. In some cases, however, they might give you a seemingly normal trig equation. So just make sure you're comfortable with manipulating and simplifying trig equations. Trig transformations have been showing up recently as well. And oh boy, have they been causing havoc. Transformations fall under the functions topic. So the best way to go about this is to master your basic transformations with basic functions so that when you do move on to trig functions, it feels a bit more natural. Obviously, make sure you know how to prove your identities, but pay attention to your trig hidden quadratics and your trig transformations. This might come as a shock to most of you, but series is actually the highest scoring topic in all of PO1, ahead of the more big name topics like your differentiation, integration, or functions. Over the past two years, series has averaged 12.8 marks per paper. So if you've been neglecting the series topic, I strongly suggest you think again. It consists of three main questions, your binomial expansion questions, arithmetic progressions question, and geometric progressions question. 
Occasionally, they might also combine the arithmetic progression and geometric progression together to create a monstrosity of a question. The reason this topic is so essential is because its three questions appear in almost every paper. The binomial expansion question has appeared in all 14 of the last 14 papers, making it the most frequent question in pure one maths. I can confidently say that a binomial expansion question is coming in June one way or another, so make sure you're comfortable with it. The geometric progressions question has appeared in 12 of the last 14 papers, sometimes even carrying up to 8 marks in a single paper. The arithmetic progressions question appeared in 6 of last year's 7 papers. So hopefully you can see why this topic is the most essential and you really should prioritize it. Moving on to differentiation, one of the more diverse topics in Pure One. It has 4 main questions, the most popular one being the stationary point question which has appeared in 11 of the last 14 papers and this is the stable of differentiation you should be comfortable with locating and determining the nature of a stationary point one question that has flown under the radar for quite a while now is the tangents and normals question it has actually appeared in 12 of the last 14 papers making it more common than the stationary point question is that question where you have to find the equation of the tangent to the curve or in some cases the equation of the normal to the curve it appears appeared in all three October papers and I wouldn't be surprised if it showed up in the June papers. Increasing and decreasing functions is another one to look out for. Before 2024, this question was pretty much non-existent, but ever since the beginning of 2024, it's been putting up some scary numbers. I suspect this might just be a 2024 thing, but according to the numbers, it might just come up again in the June session. Rates of change is one of those very sporadic questions where you can't really predict when it's going to come because it appears so infrequently. It has shown up in the last two June sessions, so if that's any indicator, it could appear in the June session as well. I know I say differentiation has four main questions, but there's also another one, albeit it's a very rare question, which is the limit of a sequence of chords. The examiners did test this concept twice last year, so just make sure you actually know what it is. For differentiation, my priority will be stationary points and tangents and normals. Finally, we move on to the integration topic. There are really only two questions that appear quite frequently in this topic. The first is your equation of a curve, which has appeared in 12 of the last 14 papers, so I'm almost certain that this will also appear in June. The second is the area under the graph question, which has appeared in 10 of the last 14 papers. Like I mentioned, when a point of intersection question comes, typically it means your part B is going to be the area of the shaded region. So just make sure you know how to solve that combination of questions. Apart from these two concepts, the only other integration concept I would worry about is volume of revolution, which is rarely tested. But who knows, Cambridge are always looking to break their trends, so it might appear in June as well. So that's all eight topics. Now I'm going to list down all the priority questions you should know if you want to do well in the CIE A Level Maths 9709 Pure One May June 2025 exam. And then after that, we'll talk about the guest paper and I'll also give you some general advice. So the priority questions are as follows the discriminant, completing the square, range inverse composite transformations, specifically trig transformations, your circles questions, perimeter and area for circular measure, trig hidden quadratics, series, the whole topic, so that's binomial expansion, arithmetic progressions, and geometric progressions. Then for differentiation, we have the stationary point and your tangents and normals question. For integration, it's going to be equation of a curve and area of shaded region. Now, as promised, if you've made it this far into the video, I have something very special for you. Using all the trends we've analyzed and my own intuition as well as insights from Cambridge examiners, I've created a guest paper for the May June 2025 PO1 exam. It's designed to look and feel just like the actual exam paper so you can get realistic practice. It includes a Cambridge style marking scheme so you know exactly where you're gaining and losing marks. Think of it as the exam before the exam, a way to give yourself an unfair advantage over your peers. So if you really want to get those top grades, don't miss out. Grab your copy now 
use the link in the pinned comment down below. Now with regards to how you should tackle the actual paper, I have a few tips. The first one being don't spend too much time on a question. If you don't know the answer, it's fine. Move on. You come back to it later if you have the time. Secondly, if your goal is simply not to fail, you really need to just focus on the priority questions as I've mentioned above. So obviously you don't have enough time to go through everything or you just don't want to go through everything. So that means you have to be very efficient with the way you allocate your time. You just need to focus on the topics that will yield the highest returns. So focus on the highest scoring topics. And for pure one, that's your series topic, your differentiation and your functions topic. And like I mentioned earlier, I do have a course that will walk you through how to deal with all of these topics. Again, it's the first link in the description. Thirdly, you've probably heard this one a lot, but it bears repeating because even the Cambridge examiners themselves are saying this is still a huge issue. Show all your working. The examiners cannot mark what you don't write. Even if it's something as silly as the quadratic formula, show the step where you're substituting your numbers into the quadratic formula. The examiner wants to see it. The fourth point is that there's really no excuse to getting any algebraic questions wrong if you know your algebra. Every question where you're solving for x or solving for some unknown, make sure to always check that your answer is correct by plugging it back into the original equation. If your answer satisfies the original equation, then it's correct. Avoiding silly mistakes like these can make all the difference. Trust me, I've been there before in my final exam in 2022. Damn, that feels like a long time ago. <laughs> At the same time, like I said, and me, you know, I'm 56 years old. Damn! I'm sorry. Um, in my final exam back in 2022, I missed a single negative sign that cost me two marks. So I ended up getting 73 out of 75. This is for pure three, instead of getting 75 out of 75. So just a single negative sign cost me top in the country, possibly even top in the world. So please just make sure to check that your answers are correct. And if it isn't, it means you've made a mistake somewhere, go through your solution and identify the mistake. And who knows, maybe that one mistake that you correct could actually help you get top in the world. The fifth point is to go into the exam with some sort of strategy. In the exam, you're already stressed out, you're panicking, nerves are high. If you have a plan for how to go through the paper, then that's one less thing to worry about. But I will tell you this, your plan is definitely not not going to work out in the exam. Trust me, it happens all the time. The reason you plan is so that you have a general sense of direction. You know that if this happens, then this is what I want to do. If things don't work out, if I can't see the solution to a certain question, I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about that. I'll just move on to the next one. The sixth point is to make sure you simulate the exam before the actual exam. Lock yourself in a quiet room, put your phone away, set a timer for one hour and 15 minutes, and solve one of the latest papers. As soon as the time elapses, stop writing. This will give you a true idea of where you are in terms of finishing the paper and performing under time pressure. My final piece of advice, very underrated, and I know most of you who definitely not listen to this, but make sure you're well rested leading up to the exam. Get enough sleep, stay hydrated. It goes a long way to take the exam with a clear mind. The paper is long and difficult to finish, so it really helps to do everything in your power to give yourself the advantage. That is all my advice to you people, and I'd like to know how are you guys feeling about the exam? comment down below. I wish you the very best in your exam. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends so that the threshold is high. All the best in your exam. Good luck.